fish deficit in the Salmon River Basin um, for Chinook salmon, a culturally significant species to the tribes. Um, we are protected by a treaty right that allows us to hunt and fish these salmon. And if there's no fish to, to hunt, then you know we really we lose we lose our cultural ways, um, and so it's was really important for the tribes to pursue their own fish hatchery, creating our own bank of fish to where we can provide harvest opportunities for tribal members. We hope to bring salmon back to places that are significant to our tribe where we haven't been able to harvest for a long time. Yeah, so we the Lower Snake River Compensation Plan has a long partnership with the Shoshone-Bannock tribe. So um, we've been around for 40 years trying to mitigate for the four Lower Snake dams. Um, we've been successful in some cases, but in some cases we haven't been successful. In one case we're not successful is bringing salmon back to the kind of homelands of where the Shoshone-Bannock tribe is culturally and significant to them and where they fish and hunt. And so this partnership is really where we provide the resources to have the, the professionals with the Shoshone Bannock tribe, you know, work directly with the resource and bring those salmon back to their homelands, hopefully, in great enough numbers that folks can interact and harvest and, and reap the benefits of those fish coming back to the to Idaho here. So this place is plentiful with water, 23 CFS actually. Um, of clean artesian water, which the species we're growing here requires pristine water, clean, fresh, and it's coming out at a constant temperature of 50 degrees, which is, which is nice. The building here was, was completely Dilap was dilapidated. It was run down. There wasn't a roof on it. The the raceways were full of junk, old old hatchery uh, remnants, I guess. We put the work in to put a new roof on, reinforced it with some two by fours, added some new piping throughout the or some new plumbing throughout the the whole building, um, plumbed in some incubation stacks brought the old raceways back to life, um, laid down some epoxy to make it a smooth finish for cleaning purposes. It's come a long ways. You know, two years ago, I came here with uh, Aaron and Lytle Denny, and mm -hmm. we were kind of literally wading through the brush out here to yeah. kind of like uncover what exists. And and now, you know, the, the ground's disturbed. We've been out here, we've been reseeding and stuff. It'll come back. but. Uh, you know, we, we waded into that hatchery building through a bunch of stinging nettles as high as me, and mm -hmm. there's a porcupine living in the hatchery building. Yeah. And we said, boy, we got to evict him and put some fish here. Yeah. You know, this is, <laughs> we want to make fish for the future. That's the whole goal of this program. And this site is so special because of all the water that Aaron's talking about. That cubic feet per second is 448 gallons a minute. And so the, you know, we multiply 23 times that, there's a ton of water here that comes artesian out of the out of the groundwater straight from the straight from Yellowstone Park out of the Snake Plain Aquifer. And so you're literally seeing water from the snowpack of those mountains. It's as clean as clear as it could get. And that's what these salmon need to thrive. So we can bring those salmon eggs here from the middle of the, the middle of Idaho, the Sawtooth Mountains, rear them here where we have the water and then take them back to their kind of their home so they can start their journey out to the ocean. You know, this site in itself, this is what we're looking for when we talk about fish hatcheries and help contribute to the to the solution is you know we're not we're not having to use electricity to pump the water the water's naturally coming to us we've got treatment options here we we run the water through these ponds behind us where they can settle out the waste grow aquatic vegetation and then the water continues to sustain the what they call the bottoms here the the lowland areas of american falls that are part of the fort hall reservation supports a ton of wildlife moose waterfowl deer uh, upland birds, um, lots of shorebirds. And so it's really a win all around, I think, for, for conservation and for what we're involved with the salmon. Yeah. It, 
it's been a long time coming, I guess. There's there's people within the the tribes department that have been working on this for 30 years, um, and we're now getting to this. Um, we've had some people that have that are now past that worked that have worked on this for a long time, and they didn't, you know, he didn't get to see this come to life. So it's 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 pretty special. There was a lot of people that kind of believed in what could happen here that said, you know what, just try something. Yeah. And that includes folks from the Shoshone Bannock Tribe, from the Fish and Wildlife Service, Idaho Fish and Game, a partner, Bonneville Power Administration, that we took those to them and said, look, you know, the fish don't care. The, the fish want to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we, have, we had a good enough run this year that we could bring some fish in, and they didn't really have a home, you yeah. know? And so this was the home we were going to build. And so we took all those planning documents, and it, it took a whole village you know, all the way from our, our planning folks and the cultural resources division to be like, hey, we've, we've done the surveys, here's what we need to do. Uh, Virginia Parks up in, in Portland was really good for us. Um, but a whole layer of people, and then the army on the ground that, yeah. you know, we came out here with a bunch of weed eaters and chainsaws yeah. and people are dragging brush. And then ultimately we brought in uh, some more expertise. We flew up a guy, Craig Rubush um, from Willow Beach National Fish Hatchery, a great heavy equipment operator. And he came out and looked at this and we had a vision and it was different yeah. than he had. And he was like, well, I bet we could build these ponds and we could do this. And, you know, within about a week's time, we had it mapped out and we took it back to the planning people and convinced them that, hey, we can trust this guy. And uh, mm -hmm. got some equipment on site and brought all that. And then expertise like Dan Gallegos out of Moore National Fish Hatch came up, did a bunch of plumbing work for a week. And so there was from about uh, mid-July until now it's the end of October bunch of work windows where people came out and Aaron's been here every single, you know, every inch of dirt that's moved, every piece of plumbing, you know, Aaron's been here the whole time kind of yeah. building the hatchery from the ground up. So, so here we are, it's exciting to have fish on site and they're going to hatch here and yeah. any day and we'll be raising fish. Mm -hmm.